Tembi. Okay. Size. Um, KB, does that mean I'm going to start on page 18, KB? I don't know. Have I marked number six on Sir, page 17? In question five. Thank you, whoever that was. I appreciate that. I don't know who you are, but thank you. So if anyone disagrees, then shout out and disagree. But otherwise, I'm going to start with page 18, question five. So have we marked question one, two, three, and four? Yes, sir. Okay. Who is speaking? Tembi. Thank you, Tembi. Okay, guys, I am recording. So number five, you had to turn the following picture equation into a chemical equation. So you have to use hydrogen as a small solid circle and oxygen as a stripy circle. So they gave you a picture equation. Is it balanced? So I want you to quickly check and see, is there the same amount of oxygen and hydrogen on the left as, it, as is on the right? Who can I pick on? Chante, is that the case? Sorry, sir. So is there the same amount of atoms on the left as is on the right? No. No. OK, so what must you do? It has to be H2O2. H2O2. OK, so it must be 2H2O2, yeah? On the right side, and then on the left side, it's H2O2. Good. So 2H2O2 on the left reacts to form 2H2O plus O2. I hope that's what you got. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can also see what's what's going on. Um, there we go. There's my screen. So we over here now. Come on, iPad. So it's a bit delayed and slow. Um, but yeah, once you've done that, then it should be quite easy to draw the pictures once you've done the balanced equation. So that's my advice is first write up the, the balanced equation and then you can balance the picture equation. So as Shantae told us, your, your balanced equation should be 2, H2O2. What is that? the name of that compound, by the way? Shante, are you there? Um, Ale, I see your hands up. Uh, so I don't know what it's called, but I just want to ask you a question. Okay, before you ask me a question, let's do it with this. So it's hydrogen peroxide, but if I asked you for its scientific name, how many hydrogens have you got? Ale, how many hydrogens? In each molecule? Two. Two. Is hydrogen a metal or a non-metal? Non-metal. And oxygen, metal or non-metal? Non-metal. Okay, so you've got a non-metal bonded to a non-metal. Do you use prefixes? Uh, yes. Good, so the prefix for two is di, so dihydrogen. And for oxygen, if there's two, then it must be? Di. Dioxide. All right. So that's its name if I asked you to name that compound. What's your question, Ale? Um, because you're writing our exams online, how would you be able to mm. ask like this type of question? Like if I had to draw Ale, I'm it. listening. Uh, so because you're writing be, our You'll be writing on exam pad paper and then you'll, you'll photograph it and upload it to Teams just like you have done with your okay. other assignments. Okay. So guys, here is a molecule of H2O2. That's a molecule of H2O2. But after we balance the equation, you need to actually have two of them. Okay. So if, if you need to have two of them, oops, then I need to draw in a second one. Okay. So you should have done that so that you've got one, two molecules of hydrogen peroxide. And that too means that you've got two of them. Okay. And then the two waters, here's one water molecule. There's the other water molecule. So that too means you've got two water molecules. 
And just one, remember there's an imaginary one in front of that oxygen. Um, so you've only got one oxygen. So there's the one and there's the oxygen. Remember oxygen's diatomic. So O2 means you've got one oxygen and a second oxygen bonded together. Two of them diatomic. All right, so that's what you had to do for that, that question. Um, you just had to add in an extra hydrogen peroxide. Okay, um, Ale, choose a friend. Um, Dimitri. Quick, quick, Ale. Dimitri. Uh, can you hear weird noises happening? Um, who can I pick on? Okay, thank you, Ale. Dimitri. You're going to do number six. Write the following chemical equations as word equations. So what is Fe the symbol for? Dimitri? Uh, no, sir. What is Fe the symbol for? That uh, is it iron. Okay. So iron plus oxygen reacts to form what? What's Fe2O3? Um... No, not and. So you look here. Uh, we did these reactions of metals in oxygen in, in your last lesson. Okay, And here they are. Um, metal and oxygen gives you a metal oxide. So the example that you've got now is iron, Fe, plus O2 to give you Fe2O3, iron oxide. Okay, so the metal would be iron, and then oxide is because you've got oxygen with it. So I'll ask you again now, the final answer for this one at the bottom here, where is it? There you go. What does it form? Iron plus oxygen gives? Iron oxide. Good. Dimitri, choose a friend. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You have to do pictures. So do a little symbol. So you can do that for iron. So Fe inside a circle and maybe oxygen with some dashed lines. So say that that is iron and that is oxygen. You can use your own symbols, but please make them very different to one another. And the symbol for hydrogen should be a little bit smaller. So there's oxygen. Uh, we need to have draw a picture of the products. So basically iron oxide. So the formula for iron oxide is Fe2O3. So we need to have two ions bonded to three oxygens. So one oxygen, two oxygens, three oxygens. How many molecules of iron oxide do I have, Dimitri? Uh, two, sir. Good. So that two there, let me do it in another color. So that two there means that I'll need to have two of those molecules. So there's the one. And let me draw in a second one. So oxygen. Oh, and I need to have Fe inside there. Oxygen, iron, oxygen, iron, and another oxygen. So three oxygens, two ions. Three oxygens and two ions. Happy Dimitri. Yes, sir. Okay, choose a friend. Ronan. Ronan, going to do 6B for us. Um, they want you to write it as a word equation. So Mg is? Magnesium plus oxygen reacts to form magnesium oxide. Use that same symbol, the circle with the diagonal lines in it for oxygen. And then I'm just going to do an open circle with an Mg in it for magnesium. Always do a key. You get a mark for your key, guys. All right, so we need a picture equation of the product. The product is just MgO. How many MgOs have I got, um, Ronan? Um, two, sir. Good, we've got two, so I need to draw two magnesium oxide molecules, yes? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's draw them quick. Some magnesium oxide, and we've got two molecules. There's the one, there's the other one. Happy running. Yes, sir. Okay, pick a friend, Ronan. Uh, Neha. Neha. Write a balanced equation for carbon and oxygen reacting to form carbon dioxide. 
So wouldn't it be a uh, carbon plus oxygen uh, C plus O two okay. equals CO two equals? I mean, react, react to form, form. CO two. Is that balanced? No. On the left, we've got one carbon. On the right, we've got one carbon, one carbon, one carbon. Oh, wait, so the no, carbons yes, are balanced. And on the left, we've got two oxygens. On the right, we've got two oxygens. So yes, it is balanced. If I asked you for the coefficients, it would be one, one, and one. Okay. Uh, Naya, choose a friend. Uh, Trinity. Trinity, number eight. Um... So hydrogen and oxygen to form water. Would I'm listening. Two H plus O to form H two O. Who agrees? Who disagrees with Trinity? Uh, wait, sorry, Trinity. What was your product? I'm sorry, sir. Can you please repeat that? What was your product? You said H two O, hey. Yeah. Okay. Any anything that I must change? Because can you see on the screen what I've written? Is that what you had? Trinity yes. is what I've written on the screen. What you had? Yes, sir. Okay. Mia, your hands up. Are you going to correct her? Yes, sir. Good. Off you go. I'm listening. Two H two. Plus Good, O2. because hydrogen's diatomic and oxygen's diatomic. Nice. Re reacts and to form 2H2O. Good. So on the left, we've got two hydrogen molecules. So it would look like that. There's one hydrogen, there's the other. You've got two hydrogen molecules. And so altogether, we've got four atoms of hydrogen on the left. Do you agree, Mia? Yes, sir. And on the right, we've got two waters. Each water's got two. So water is a Mickey Mouse shape, remember? So we've got two water molecules. How many hydrogen atoms? Four. Okay, so four on the left, four on the right. So hydrogen is a balanced oxygen on the left. How many? Um, two. Two atoms, hey? Yeah. Okay, and on the right, there's an invisible two. one there, and we've got two, two waters. So each one's got one oxygen, which means that we've got two oxygens on the right, mm -hmm. two oxygens on the left. So... It's balanced. Okay. Trinity, do you understand why you were wrong, but you understand how to correct it now? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Uh, Trinity, pick a friend. Yash. Okay, Yash. Um, let me just see if I can show you what the picture equation should look like if I've got the memo for this on my iPad. Okay, there we go. Here's a memo, so I don't have to draw them all. Um, guys, I will send this to you at the end, but you need to understand how it works. So, Yash, I hope you had something that looks like this. So, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about it. Um, if that's the symbol for carbon, how many carbons are on the left, Yash? Um, two. Two carbons on the left. Oh, uh, one. Just one, yeah. And on the right-hand side? Uh, one. One, there it is. I've, I've circled them in green. So the carbons are balanced. Let's check the oxygens. Oxygens on the left, we've got two um, O2 molecules. So there's the one oxygen molecule, diatomic. There's two, two oxygens there. And on the second molecule, we've also got two atoms of oxygen. So four atoms of oxygen on the left. How many atoms of oxygen on the right? Um, two, four. There they are. Oh, there. Okay. Um, and then that's all. Be done. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hydrogen. I'm forgetting about hydrogen. Uh, hydrogen on the left, we've got four. One, two, three, four. And on the right, we've got four. One, two, three, four. So hydrogen's a balance. So carbon's balanced, oxygen's balanced, hydrogen's balanced. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Um, let's do, Yash, tell me the name of a person that you want to do number B, 9B. Um, Alex. Okay, before you go, Yash, did you, did you get a picture equation that looks 
kind of like the one that I did. You may have had slightly different symbols, but it should mean the same thing. Did you get that? Uh, yes. Okay, good. Alex, um, 9B. Uh, okay. Let's check. Let's do carbons. Ooh. How many carbons are on the left? So there's one, there's one carbon on the left. Good. I did green for carbon. Carbon, so I'll keep that same key. So there we go. Carbon, the symbol for carbon is the diagonal line. So there it is. So one carbon on the left and carbon's on the right. There's one carbon on the right. Okay, so carbon's balanced. Let's do sulfurs. Um, wait, sorry, oxygens. Let's do oxygens. Oxygens on the left. You've got three oxygen molecules. There they are. There's the first molecule, the second molecule, and the third molecule. Each molecule's got two atoms because oxygen's diatomic. So we've got six Oxygens on the left and on the right. One, two, three. That's a bit of a problem, eh? Yeah. Okay, so we need to change something. Um, so how did you change it so that it was balanced? Um, but so isn't it already balanced because the carbon, oh, wait, yeah. carbon dioxide Sorry, I've circled. Two. Oh, you've circled the wrong ones, eh? Mm. There we go. So Those are the balanced. oxygens in this case. So it is balanced. So we've got six oxygens on the left and one, two, three, four, five, six oxygens on the right. So oxygens are balanced, yeah? And let's um, check the sulfurs. So sulfurs on the left. There's two, and then on the right, there's two. Good. Okay, so on the left, there's two. On the right, there's two. So all balanced. Did you get a picture equation that looks kind of like the one that we had? The one yes, that sir. I had? Okay. Yeah, so I just did. when you do this, just put key in case maybe you might a little bit. It looks, this is actually part of your equation. It's not. So just put your key in the box. Okay, so you happy with that one, Alex? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, Alex, pick a friend to do the next one. Um, I'll pick a corner. Okay, corner. You there? Yes, sir. All right, so let's read together quickly. Rust is a form of iron oxide. I'm sure you've seen a piece of metal lying around somewhere that's gone all rusty. All that is is oxygen, and the oxygen's reacted with... Sorry, it's an iron. The, the piece of metal is iron, generally. And the iron has then reacted with oxygen in the air. And we call it rust, that, that stuff that you see on the outside of the metal, that orangey substance. We call it rust, but its actual name is what, Akuna? Sorry, sir? So that orange stuff that you see when you leave a piece of metal outside and it rusts, we call it rust just in like common English. But what's its actual scientific name? I'm not sure, sir. Okay, read question 10. You obviously didn't do question 10, did you? No, I did, sir. Then you'd know the answer. So what's question 10? What's the fancy word, the scientific word for rust? It's on your screen right now. Some oxide. It's Good. So it's an oxide. And if the piece of metal that rusted, that form of the oxide. oxide was iron, what? Yeah, there we go. Okay. So iron oxide is the fancy word for rust. So when iron's exposed to oxygen in air, you get a similar reaction to the one to the one with steel, um, but just more slowly. So the iron is gradually eaten away as it reacts with the oxygen in the air. Under wet conditions, iron will rust more quickly. When the air in a specific area contains moisture mixed with acid or salt, the area is referred to as having a corrosive climate. So would rust occur faster or slower by the ocean? Faster by the ocean because the ocean has salt water which quickens the rust. Exactly. Okay. So by the ocean, the air is nice and moist and humid. Whereas here in Joburg, I think you guys remember seeing the, the smoke machine in my room the last time, in, in my study the last time when I was teaching you guys. Did you see it? A corner? Yes. Okay. So that was a humidifier that I had to, to add moisture to the air because Joburg air is so dry. Okay. So you're right. So it happens more quickly because like you said, near the ocean, the air has got more moisture and it's mixed with salt, therefore it's a corrosive climate. Okay, Connor, pick a friend for the next one. Uh, I'll pick... Someone that hasn't been already. Okay, I'll pick... Let's see. 
Junior. Junior. Um, I know you said you didn't do some of them, Junior. That's fine. But talk to me now. Instead of using steel or iron in window and door frames, what alternative materials could be used? So wood is an option. What other options can you think of, Junior? Um, copper, maybe. Oh, no. Copper would, would form copper oxide very, very quickly. Copper oxide is actually a bluish substance. Have you ever seen like water pipes, copper water pipes that get a little bit greeny blue? Have you ever seen that? No, sir. Yeah. Have you ever seen an old like a five cent coin that gets, it, first of all, it goes dark brown. And if you really leave it to rest for a long time, it goes slightly greeny blue. That's what will happen with um, copper oxide. So copper is not a good choice. Anything else that you think won't form a metal oxide. So is don't use uh, metal, use a non-metal. What other okay, substances so other than wood could you use? Hmm? Aluminium. Aluminium is a metal, and they do actually use aluminium because it's, it's less reactive than copper or, or steel. So they do use aluminium, but I said to you, pick something that's a non-metal. Oh, non-metal. Oh, sorry, sir. Mm. It could be. You're right. The aluminium is right. Instead of using steel or iron, aluminium is an option. And we do a lot of the windows that they use in modern houses. Even the windows here in my office are made up of aluminium. So like the most of the Saheti school windows are all aluminium. They, they paint it brown, but you can get brown ones or white ones. But that is aluminium metal that they use. But I'm now asking you for an even better option that is a non-metal. Um, stainless steel is a metal and it would be... It would be an option, sure. It's that we don't use stainless steel. Um, what I was hoping Junior would say, Junior, it would look a little bit weird, I agree, but do you agree that you could use plastic? You could have plastic doors, plastic windows, window frames, I mean. Do you yes, agree? Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So if you were somewhere by the coast that really your window frames and door frames rusted very quickly, you could use plastic. Okay. Um, someone else has sent something. Uh, Katia, would aluminium work? So yeah, I've discussed aluminium. So wood, aluminium. And then the last one that I said could be even plastic. Okay. And that's why it's also important to paint them often so that you, you seal them so that the air and moisture can't get to the metal and, and corrode the metal, make the metal form the metal oxide. That's why you have to paint them often. Uh, Junior, pick a friend for me to do number C. Uh, KB. Okay, KB, why do you think that um, iron oxide is a problem? Think about the properties of iron or steel that would be affected by the formation of rust. So KB, I'll guide you a little bit with this question. Generally, things that need to be quite strong would be made of iron. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay. So give me an example of something that needs to be quite strong that's made up of iron. Um... Scissors. Scissors, okay. And if you left your scissors out in the rain for a long time at the coast, at Durban, let's say, and your scissors then got weakened by the iron oxide, so they got eaten away or, or made weaker, would your scissors be very strong and be able to cut thick cardboard if they've been made weaker because they've become thinner because they've reacted with oxygen and salt and moisture in the air? Mm, wait, pardon, sir? Would your scissors still be very strong if you let no, if you left no. them out in say at Durban for for a month and they rusted and became thinner because the metal in the iron metal in your scissors um, reacted with the salt and the moisture in there? Would they still be very strong? No, sir. No. Okay. If you had a boat and you didn't paint it and the boat was made had a steel hull, um, so say like the Titanic for example, if they didn't paint it and the salt water corroded that iron, eventually you'd have a very, very thin hull of your boat and then it would you could just make a hole through it. I'm sure you may have seen like a sheet of metal, like a sign, for example, and it's so rusted that you can actually poke it and you'll poke your finger right through it. Have you ever seen something like that, KB? Uh, something similar to that, yes, sir. See what I mean? So if it's like really, really thin, it becomes weaker and then it's it, it can break easily. So if you had a criminal in jail and they had iron burglar bars in, in jail, would you be very happy if the criminal was in a jail by the coast 
and the iron burglar bars were not painted and the iron burglar bars rusted and became weaker and thinner, then the criminal could just break them and get out of jail, hey? I would not be happy, so. Exactly. Okay, all right. So there you go, guys. Iron is strong and used in metal chains, etc. So in the memo, we've got chains. You could have boats. You could have burglar bars or jail, the, the, the bars in a jail. KB said scissors, so that's fine. So things like that. Rust weakens the iron, causing the structure to deteriorate or break. Okay, so that's what I wanted you to have there. Um, KB, give me a friend that hasn't gone already to do number D. Helen. Okay, Helen, you there? Yes, sir. Okay, you're going to do D for us. So rust is porous. Porous means it's got lots of tiny little holes, like a sponge is porous. You could you could say a sponge is porous. Um, even something like a rough tar road is porous. It's got lots of little pits and holes in it, whereas something like, say, glass is smooth. It doesn't have little holes. So rust is a porous material, which means that air and water can penetrate, can get into through the rust to reach the iron below it. So to prevent rust, iron can be coated with zinc oxide, which is not a porous material. So what they're basically saying is if you took a piece of iron and you dipped it in um, zinc oxide, it would be smooth and it would stop. And what, what happens? So say, for example, like a carport or cars and trailers and stuff like that, they're made out of steel, but then they coat, they spray on zinc oxide so that the, the steel is um, coated with zinc oxide and it stops it from rusting. So it's got a protective coating. I ask you to write the word equation for the formation of zinc oxide. So if you're going to form zinc oxide, then zinc oxide must be a product to Helen. Yes, sir. Okay, so what would your reactants have to be then to make zinc oxide? Zinc plus oxygen. Well done. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, pick a friend to do number 11. Kaya. Kaya? She said that she had wire problems, but Kaya? Kaya? No. Okay, Helen, will you pick someone else for us? Tembi. Helen? Tembi. Tembi, you there? Tembi? Tembi. No Tembi. Oh, Helen, you need you need more friends. Pick a third friend. I don't know where Tembi's gone. Eleni Baladakis. Eleni, are you there? I'm here, sir. Yay, third time lucky, Helen. Thank you, Helen. Okay, Eleni, so hydrogen and oxygen also react spectacularly. The reaction between a large quantity of hydrogen and oxygen in the air produces a beautiful orange fireball and a very loud explosion. In 1937, there was that Zeppelin, that German airship, so a very, very big balloon that was filled with hydrogen. It exploded and fell to the ground in a huge fireball as the hydrogen gas, which kept it floating. Remember, hydrogen is lighter than air. It's a bit like helium, but it is flammable. The hydrogen gas that kept it floating ignited and reacted with the oxygen in the air. So there was a huge big fireball. It was a terrible, terrible, terrible disaster. Um, so complete the chemical equation for the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. What will you get if you mix hydrogen and oxygen? We've already had this equation today. Water. Good. So to, instead of writing water, because they said the chemical H2 equations are not H2. words. Why two? You're right. Why do you have a two here? Balance the equation. Good. So if you had H2O, you're only half right. You'd only get one out of two marks. You need to have a two there because it's two H2O. So on the left, you'd have two hydrogen molecules. Hydrogen's diatomic. So you've got two of them. On the right, you've got two water molecules. So what uh, would look like that, the Mickey Mouse shape. Okay, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. Four on the left and four on the right, so hydrogen's balanced. And then oxygen is diatomic. So oxygen, you just have an oxygen molecule with two atoms on the left. And on the right, each water molecule's got one oxygen. So two on the left, two on the right, it's balanced. What's the common name for that product? Eleni? Water. Good. And then Eleni, pick a friend to do the next one. 11C. Um, Katarina Morfo. Katarina, what's um, 
the chemical name for water. Javan, I have added you again. Um, Katerina, are you there? Katerina, is she gone? Where is she gone? She is here. Katerina, speak to me. Okay, she's gone. You're going to have to pick someone else, Eleni. Yummy. Oh, you're there. Okay, yes. Katerina, what's the fancy name, the science name for water? I'm listening. Uh, is it dihydrogen monoxide? Well done, yes. Dihydrogen monoxide. Thank you. Um, this should be monoxide, yeah. Dihydrogen monoxide. Please make a little note there that you changed the memo. So, what is the, the common name? And then dihydrogen monoxide is the systematic chemical name. Okay, Katrina, pick a friend to do the next one. Katrina? Um, uh, so has Javon answered yet? Javon, are you there? He said that he was restarting his Wi-Fi, so I'm going to invite him again, but apparently he's not here now. Um, pick another person. Pick um, someone else. Next person. Tembi, sir. Tembi's been. Who hasn't been? Oh, uh, okay. Maybe Enzo. Enzo. Is he? Enzo doesn't ever talk to me, though. But Enzo, are you there? No, Enzo's not talking to us. Katarina, third Kat person. Katia. Huh? Katia. Katia. Okay, Katia. Katia normally talks to us. Katia, are you there? Katia? Katia? All right, I'm going to pick people that I know haven't been yet because Katia is also not talking to us. Um, Alex has been in a corner, has been. Christina, Hadja, Alexandra, are you there? Christina? Christina? Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, so if you're going to make copper oxide, what reactants would you need? Copper and oxygen. Good. So copper plus oxygen will give us copper oxide. Uh, pick another person to do the next one, please. Hello? I can't hear you. Uh, Christina, please, can you pick someone to do the next one? Okay, Christina's gone. Um, who has not been? Dimitri, have you been? Dimitri? Uh, yes, sir, I have gone. You have uh, Junior, Katrina, Katya, KB, Kaya. Kaya has been, I'm sure. Nastasia, you can do the next one for us. So if we got magnesium and oxygen, what are you going to make from magnesium and oxygen? Wait, so which question is this? It doesn't matter. If you've got magnesium plus oxygen, what will your product be? Nastasia, what's your name? Isn't it, isn't it magnesium oxide? Good, thank you. See, it didn't require much thought. So magnesium oxide. Okay, after Nastasia, Nea has been... Nia, I don't remember if I've spoken to you. Nia, are you there? Yes, sir. Have you been? No, sir. Now you're going. Um, what plus what will give us diphosphorus pentaoxide? Penta you don't have to Phosphor use the symbols, just the names. Phosphorus and oxygen. Nice. Well done, Nia. Okay, so phosphorus plus oxygen. All right. And Yash has been, Trinity's been. Okay, so everyone's been. Nia, you get to do another one because you're special. Carbon plus oxygen will give us what, Nia? So it can give us carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide since we don't know how many sure. atoms you they are. are. Very, I'm very impressed. OK, 
Okay, so either of those two. That wasn't even on the memo, and you got it. Well done, Leah. I'm very impressed. You can give yourself a naughty badge. See? Your video is not on, so I can't see you. Um, okay, guys, let's see if we can finish off number 13. Mia, pick, pick the next person to do number 13A with me. KB. KB. The reaction between sulfur and oxygen to form sulfur dioxide. What's the word equation, KB? KB. 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 No KB. Um, all right, let's start at the top of the list again. A corner. A corner. Yes, sir. All right. So this one over here now for number 13A, the word equation for the reaction between sulfur and oxygen to form sulfur dioxide. Sulfur plus oxygen. Oh, the chemical. Uh, word equation first. So yeah, you're right. Oh. Sulfur plus oxygen. Sulfur gives. plus oxygen reacts to form sulfur dioxide. Nice. There you go. And then the chemical equation for that. It's uh, like the sim symbol S. Yeah. Plus O2. Good. It's diatomic. Nice. To form. Reacts to form. What did I put here? So just combine them. S plus O2. So sorry, yeah. I left it out. Good. Sulfur, so sulfur dioxide. So sulfur would be S. Dioxide would be O2. All right. So S plus O2 gives SO2. And then here's the picture equation. So do a little key to, to show what the symbols are. So S would be, in this case, a circle with three dots. And oxygen, so that's sulfur. And oxygen then would just be an open dot. Like I've said many times before, always give a key because you will be given marks for a key. Okay, Alex, you can do number B. Um, the reaction between phosphorus and oxygen forms diphosphorus pentaoxide. So word equation. So it's phosphorus plus oxygen and it reacts to form diphosphorus pentoxide. Nice. Um, Ale, what's the chemical equation for that? Balanced, eh? I need to give it balanced. Mm -hmm. So give it to me unbalanced and then we'll balance it. Okay, well then P yeah. plus O2. Okay, and to balance it. And what is it, it for? Be, oh. Uh, well, as I say the word or what it says, yeah. No, it's, we're doing a chemical equation, so when chemical symbols are. P2O5. All right, so it's not balanced yet. So if you've got O5 on the five oxygens on the right and two on the left, what number can I put inside the blue box? Let me give you a blue box. What number can I put inside the blue box um, to balance the oxygens? Well, first, we can, can't we balance, can't we rather balance the phosphorus first? Sure. Okay, so you want to put a what number inside the first blue box? Uh, two. Okay, so you're going to put a two there. And now our phosphoruses are balanced, so that's great. And then you want to balance the oxygen. Yeah. Okay, so no, you need then, to multiply both sides by something. Yeah. So if you've got five here. So it would be five well, and then two on the other side. So it would so be you five have a two here. or two. No, five there. Good. So now you've actually got how many oxygen atoms on the left? Ten. Ten. And on the right, you've got five. So what number must I put in front of in, in the last two box? And All right, then we let's need to change the one in front of the P to oh, a four. I was getting there. Thank you very much. Well done. Naughty badge for Ali. Guys, if you struggle a little bit with this, then it should be a little bit easier once you've done the picture equation. Okay, so here's the picture equation. So at first, we would have had just what I'm going to circle in blue. So P plus O2 to give P2O5. And then that will help you balance it. Okay. Um, there needs to be a key. So your key would have to be that this is phosphorus. 
and then the empty circle is oxygen. And what else have we got? No, oh, that's all. Okay, so there's your key that I've written in blue. So you're going to have four phosphorus atoms. There they are, one, two, three, four, represented by that four. So that's why we've got four phosphoruses. And then you've got five oxygen molecules and ten atoms altogether. So for the, the oxygen, oxygen molecule is O2, and you've got five of them. One, two, three, four, and five. There they are. And then the P2O5, um, there's the P. So each one's got two P's in it and five O's. One, two, three, four, five O's. And you've got two of those molecules. There's the first one, there's the second one. Okay, so you're happy with that, Ale? Yes. Great. Um, pick someone or wait, who's after you, Ale? Shante comes after you. So Shante, you're going to do the last one for us. And then we are done with the book, guys. Shante, um, reaction between zinc and oxygen forms zinc oxide. So give me the word equation for that. Zinc plus oxygen is zinc oxide, and then not zinc is zinc oxide reacts to form. So when you say the arrow, the arrow represents reacts to form. So you say zinc plus oxygen reacts to form zinc oxide. Good. And then chemical equation. Zn plus O2. Yeah. Reacts to form. Reacts to form. Z, there's nothing in the little on the line. It's just Zn O2. Okay. Um, there's actually a mistake in this question, guys. It's um, that ZnO shouldn't be there. So zinc, the, you, you're, you're not meant to know this. So if you didn't know this, don't stress. It's not. It's not something that I expected you to know. You'll real. You'll be taught how to work this out next year when you're in grade ten. Um, how to account the charges. So the formula for zinc oxide is actually ZnO. Um, so this O2 shouldn't actually be here. So that two. Can I ask you to please cross out from your notes that two over there? Oops. Cross it out. And I'll give you guys two minutes to now redo your chemical equation and your picture equation, given that the formula for zinc is actually just ZNO. So do that now quickly. I'll give you two minutes and then I'll show you what the answer is. Useful fact for you guys, zinc oxide is often the active ingredient in sunscreen. In, in it um, forms a coating over your skin that reflects sunlight, so it protects your skin from the sun. I also use titanium, um, titanium oxide as well. Okay, so this is what you should have. So you should have zinc plus oxygen. So zinc plus O2 to give ZnO. Because you've got O2, you would have to have a 2 in front of the ZnO. And if you've got a two in front of the Z, you know, you'd have to have a two in front of the zinc. Okay. So the only thing you have to get rid of in this in the memo is the two after the Z, you know. So let's do a key. Um, circle with diagonal lines represents Z in zinc. And open circle represents oxygen. Okay, so there we go, we've got zinc. Two of, there's the first one, there's the second one. So two zinc atoms react with one oxygen molecule. Oxygen's got a two there, so it means it's diatomic. There's an invisible one in front of it. So there is just the one oxygen molecule. And we form two zinc oxide molecules. So the zinc would be that atom and that atom. The oxygen would be that atom and that atom. And the two means that we've actually got two of them. There's the first molecule, there's the second molecule. Okay, um, who's got questions on any of the work that we've done today? Anyone got questions on the work that we've done today? Okay, anyone got questions on any of the work that we've covered in this booklet? You want me to go over any question? I'll count up to 10, and if no one's spoken by the end of it, then I will assume you guys are all good and happy with the section one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty
two, three, four, five, good, six, sir. seven, eight, nine, ten. Who's good? Who was that? Helen. It sounded like Helen. Yes, sir. It was me. I'm getting to know your voices even better now. Awesome. So that means you're all going to get 100% in your exam for this. Right. Not Guys, 100%. <laughs> For, for balancing equations, I'm quite confident now that you are all able to balance equations, okay? I don't think there's anyone here in this chat that doesn't know how to balance an equation because you've done so many in this booklet. Remember, it does help you to, while you're still learning, but you have already learned now, to draw the picture equation of it. So like here, for example, that's a bit of a tricky equation to balance, but if you do the picture equation for it, then it helps you to, to balance the equation. The trick, or not the trick, but the problem with balancing equations is that unless you practice it a lot, it takes you a lot of time. And in an exam, you don't have a lot of time. So you need to practice it so that you can do them like quick, quick, quick. So in Teams, there are there is a tutorial. Um, I'd like you to please do the tutorial on balancing equations. You should be doing most of the tutorials, all of the tutorials, especially if your term mark last year was less than 60, then you should be doing the TUTs. Um, but I'd like you all to please do the balancing equations TUT. So on Teams... It's in the it's in the tutorials folder. Let me just stop sharing my screen with you. I can see also it's in the tutorials folder. Please make sure you do it, guys. It will help you. It's not punishment. Do it, and then I'll put up the memo so that you can mark it. And then please arrange a time to meet with me if you're not sure of anything, not just this section, any of the work covered so far. Because from next week onwards, we're going to just start doing revision. We'll do tutorials and past exam papers, and we're going to use our next lessons. Uh, next week's lessons to do revision and if anyone's got questions and please ask me and i will help you because chances are if you've got a question on it the rest of the okay. class will will have a quick okay any any questions before you go guys no uh neha you've got a question so where do we find the recordings of the lesson i'll paste a link for you okay, okay. Thank you. all right okay bye guys i'll see you all again on monday Bye, sir. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye, sir. Thank bye. You. bye, guys. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir.